All right, y'all, just a quick little note on the blurriness that you're about to see. I usually screw up in the statistics and the info cards once a week. Well, this week my screw up was that I left my lens on manual focus, so I'm going to be a bit blurry in some videos this week. Sorry, y'all. We'll do better next week. College Football Nerds here to talk Wisconsin, Ohio State, second time around. And we had a long discussion previously earlier in the year. Obviously, we did this this video, so hopefully y'all are catching this one and not the other one. Maybe the YouTube algorithm will find this one and give us some love. I want to remind y'all we have a podcast version. For those of y'all that have a daily commute, for those of y'all that aren't trying to use up all your data. We love the interaction on YouTube and we love discussing with y'all, but we understand that uh, some of y'all want to maybe have the audio version. So it will be out same day. That's a promise for me to you. So you will have it. Uh, all right, Josh, we already talked this one up once this year and the model had this game close. It didn't have a lot of data. It ended up being a blowout. We thought it would be a bigger win for, for uh, Ohio State than the model said. Um, but a lot's happened since then. So let's take let's take Ohio State's offense off the table for a minute. I know it's a big part of who they are, but let's take it off the table. I'm just talking about this defense. Michigan didn't really give us a blueprint on how to beat Ohio State because they ended up getting killed anyway, but they did put up 27 points. And they put up 27 points, including a red zone turnover that maybe could have been had them in the 30s um, if Shea Patterson yet again didn't fumble the ball. So... Talk to me, Josh, on do you think that one Michigan showed us that Ohio State can bleed uh, defensively and there are some potential concerns there, but follow that up with does Wisconsin have something the second time around to even take advantage of some you know deficiencies maybe defensively that Ohio State has shown on tape? All right, so there's a lot to unpack there. Um I do think Ohio State looked a little mortal at times in the their two big games here with Penn State and Michigan. I think when the Penn State game, they got up early and they really struggled to put that one away, even though they wanted to. They won the game late. There's a backup quarterback situation, you know, whatever. I think this game was encouraging that they put 14 points up every quarter. So the first thing you have to understand is Ohio State put up 577 yards of offense in this game. They threw for 11.6 yards per attempt, ran over for over five yards per carry. They killed Michigan offensively. They scored a lot of points. They did it consistently. I think the mortality aspect came because when Michigan was operating their offense at a decent level, they were able to move the ball fairly well. Over seven yards per attempt, three and a half yards per carry. Not good numbers, but they were good for a period. Michigan's been janky offensively all season. I think what I've seen from those two games is that Ohio State does have a certain element of mortality to them. They've still dominated these games by and large, but they haven't necessarily been the greatest team ever, the way I've seen some people talk about that maybe this is the greatest team um, you know, since 1920. I don't know that I completely agree with that yet, uh, based off what they've seen. It looks like they could still lose a game to an elite team. I still think they probably would win those games. I still have them number one, let's be very clear, I don't know that the separation was or was not that high. If they'd won both games 56-10, to 10, I would have thought the separation was very high. So I do think there's mortality there. And when we nitpick Ohio State, especially at the playoff level, because remember our comparison for Ohio State to a certain degree it's versus Wisconsin. We'll get into that in this video, but to a large degree, it's, it's comparing Ohio State to what Clemson is, what LSU is, and those teams have been machines at the end of the season themselves. So you have to sort of gauge all these things together. There, there's reason to believe maybe you can score on Ohio State, maybe you can slow down Ohio State. But no one's been able to do it consistently. No one's been able to do it for four quarters. When they've tried, and this was a point I made in the top 10, the biggest thing that I saw in this game is there was so much pressure on Michigan to score continually that the moment they screwed up, it snowballed and they were out of the game almost immediately. And the moment they had to throw the ball to win against the Ohio State defense, they were able to pin their ears back. And went just absolutely upside down. So I think Ohio State, if they're in a close game, maybe they're mortal. It has to be a very, it's a very good team. But there's still a tremendous amount of pressure against anybody playing against them because Ohio State can absolutely score. And their defense is so disruptive that you can't afford any sort of mistake because they're going to capitalize. Okay, so we've already got one set of data where Wisconsin got blown out. Um, they didn't really get blown out, though. 
um, where they just got run and they took a lot of risk and, and you know bad things happened. They kind of died death by a thousand cuts. We've talked about this in the past in that, uh, and really not a lot this year, but where there's matchups where you're completely outmanned, but you're good enough to maybe get a win one out of 10 times, things have to go your way, but you have to take a lot of risks. And most coaches don't play that route. Most coaches try to shorten the game. They try to keep it close, avoid mistakes, and they end up getting beaten pretty badly anyway. And I think that's what happened with Wisconsin. So explain that concept a little bit where you might win the game, but the downside is you might get really blown out. And talk about whether or not you think Wisconsin has the tools to take that approach to maybe get that one out of 10 and what they need to do to get it. So the concept you're talking about here that we've talked about a lot in the past, and I don't think we've really talked about it too much this year. Teams, when you're under man, tend to play a very aggressive style of offense and sometimes defense where you're taking a lot of shots because you need to capitalize on big plays in order to be successful. A lot of advanced metrics in football look at efficiency. And then look at your ability to effectively make first downs, your ability to consistently convert the necessary or expected yardage in a play, being like four yards first down, um, four yards second down, whatever you need to get third, third down and convert, right? <clears throat> but um, I, I think sometimes what we miss is if you're not a very good team where you're undermatched in a particular game, the best strategy is often to sort of roll the dice because you know – um, you know, if you need to beat in Ohio State and you know that if you play them straight up, you're going to lose, what you need to do is run trick plays. You need to throw the ball vertically as much as possible because those plays, yeah, they may turn into turnovers, but they can also turn into touchdowns. And those same plays that can really go against you because it can cause you to go three and out more often because it can cause you to throw an interception that turns into a pick six, it can also give you an opportunity to win games. We saw this with teams like Ole Miss uh, when they were in their heyday uh, under Hugh Freeze. They were going through the jug- going for the jugular in every game all the time. And they could beat an Alabama, and then they could turn around and lose to an Arkansas in the same season. And, in fact, they did. Um, and the reason for it was they ran in a style of offense that was very volatile. You know, the more you are a ground-and-pound, consistent pro-style offense, which is what Wisconsin's comfort zone is, The more consistent you are, the more you beat the teams you ought to beat, the more you're likely to be unable to rise up and beat a team above you. Um, I would say Michigan has suffered from the same flaw under Harbaugh. It's a problem with that style of offense and defense. You have to turn up the aggression a couple notches. You have to be willing to be blown out if you want to beat a team that maybe has some advantages. And I think athletically, if you want to be honest, Ohio State does have a lot of advantages on Wisconsin. So the question is, can Wisconsin turn it up? And I think there's a positive to see in this Minnesota game because in Wisconsin-Minnesota, it wasn't just that Wisconsin won this game 38-17, right? And and I want to be clear here, and I'm going to be very honest. I didn't have a lot of faith in Minnesota. I haven't had a lot of faith in Minnesota all season. If you read our comments, you follow us on Twitter, you know that I don't have a ton of faith in Minnesota. I thought they were a pretty darn good team. I did not think they were a playoff caliber team. I never believed that at any point. I wasn't really sold they were truly better than Penn State. I think they had one good game against the one good team they played up to that point. They had four miserable games to start the season. I think Minnesota is merely a really good team. Wisconsin came out, beat them 38-17 the way a team should. That is a legitimate top 10 team beating a team that I think is a pretty good, pretty darn good team and not more than that. But what Wisconsin did in the game in beating them that way is they threw for 12.7 yards per attempt. They only threw for 22, pa- only threw 22 passes, but they were highly successful. They had a ton of yardage. Cone was extremely, you know, capable and efficient of getting big plays on those pass plays, and they were able to generate a lot of points, a lot of yardage. I think the most important thing for Wisconsin in this game is not to be afraid to be aggressive, really offensively and defensively to score a lot of points. You know, don't be afraid to throw the ball over 20 times. And when Ohio State and Wisconsin played last time, I think part of the problem in that game is the run game wasn't effective at 2.4 yards per attempt. The pass game was not terribly effective at 6.4 yards per attempt, but 6.4 yards per attempt was closer to effective than what they got out of the run game. Now, Gohan had a miserable day. Let's be completely clear on this. But I think they relied too much on Taylor, oddly enough, in the Ohio State game. I know it's the bell cow. He wasn't running the ball very effectively. I think for them to be successful in this game, they need to throw the ball more. 
They need to be more aggressive. They need to be more creative with the way that Taylor gets the ball. And they need to make him be more effective by the way he's used. Taylor had more carries than Cone had throws in the Ohio State game. Against Minnesota, Cone had more attempts than Taylor had carries. They were a lot more effective. Obviously, completely different opponent. I think the route for Wisconsin to be effective is to let Cone throw it down the field. Maybe it turns into interceptions. Maybe it doesn't. If you have long interceptions, they turn into punts. You hope that's okay. If that all goes sideways, yes, you may absolutely get blown out. But I think if what they did, if they do again what they did before against Ohio State and they lean on the run, I think it's going to go against them, and I think they're just going to lose a death by a thousand cuts. All right, so I, w- I want to go ahead and get into the model because I think this is interesting, and no shocker to anyone here, it's a lot more in step with probably what Vegas thinks, and I haven't seen the line yet. I'll look it up while you're talking, um, unless you already know it. And, but it's it's also a lot more in step with probably what our predictions would be versus the first model. And the first model, like we talked about, the when you have limited data, especially in the early season when you have teams that play trash, um, you know, we've talked about the Cincinnati issue with with, um, with Ohio State, which I think it's actually Cincinnati was already on the schedule. It's Miami of Ohio mm-hmm. that they had to ha- add because TCU dropped out. But the long and short of it was when these two teams played, we had such little data uh, for both of them, especially out of conference. So touch points outside of conference are so much more valuable. We didn't have any of that. It predicted a close win. Um, it is not predicting a close game this time. So why don't you go ahead and get in the numbers, tell us what the numbers are expecting, and then we'll talk about it. Right. So as you said last time, our model had a Wisconsin 24, Ohio State 23. It's worth noting, if you think we're stupid for that, Daniel had Ohio State 34-17. I had Ohio State 27-10. So we weren't really all that far off from the score. We just had a model that didn't have enough data. Now our model has more data. Same model, just more data. Uh, Prediction's quite a bit different, okay? So this is predicting a score of 36-17. Pretty, you know, kind of in line. Obviously more points for Wisconsin than you got the last time that they played Ohio State. But obviously a lot more... I think realistic to what a lot of people expect this game to be. Um, Ohio State's defense, unsurprisingly, is a little better than Wisconsin. 63% rush, 74 pass. Wisconsin, 79% rush, 84 pass. And, you know, Ohio State's operating in like the six yard per play region. And offensively, six yards per play is a really good day, not necessarily a day that will allow you to name your own score Uh, but it's enough to put up a lot of points. Um, Wisconsin at 4.5 yards per play predicted. um, That's enough to move the ball some and score some points, like 17, not enough to score more than that. So I think it's a pretty reasonable number. And I'll I'll go a step further. So the last game, 38 to 7. Now, our model does not try to say this game will be like the last one. There's no like plug-in that says, okay, these teams have played before, make it the same numbers. But these predictions are pretty consistent uh, with the last game that's played. Wisconsin expected to get 6.3 yards per attempt in our model. Um, Their prior game, they were at 6.4 yards per attempt. They're expected to get 3.4 yards per carry. They were 2.4 yards per carry in the last game. Um, Offensively, Ohio State's expected to be 7.75 yards per attempt. They were 7.6 yards per attempt the last time they played. 5.3 yards per carry was the real result. Our model is now predicting 4.6. So everything here is really closely aligned with the last time they played. Again, there's really no matching algorithm here that's saying the yardage totals and all have to be exactly the same as the last game. What it's saying is, yeah, that last game is pretty much it's just saying that last game is fairly typical to how these teams have played throughout the season. I think this game is going to be somewhat similar. It does think Wisconsin probably doesn't get held to seven again. Um and it's, it's what's interesting is it's saying they won't be held to seven, even though it's not necessarily thinking they move the ball that much better. It thinks that seven points is a little, a little unlikely or a touch unlikely, even at that production level, that Wisconsin can usually score a little bit more, find a way to get some points on the board. Um, but Ohio State's absolutely expected to score in the mid, mid to upper 30s. I think that not only does our model have more data, but we have more data. And, and right after the Ohio State game, I felt like Wisconsin was overrated. I felt like, okay, you lost Illinois. You've gotten blown out by Ohio State. But looking at their season as a whole, I think they're a better team than I was giving them credit for midseason, in my mind at least. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give my pick. I I think Ohio State is 
just that good. And I don't think the first game was an aberration. Though I do think when you get into the championship games, the season has started to take its toll. And I think the season, we saw that with Penn State and Michigan. So this is the third good team in a row that they're having to play. Um, I don't think Ohio State beats them as bad as the last time. I'm going to go with my same pick from the last game, which proved to be pretty close. Um, 34-17 Ohio State in this one. Tell me what you think. So um, I've got this one lower scoring. And the reason for that's fairly simple. Well, that's what you said for Michigan Ohio State too, just to remind well, everybody cuz they're going to remind you in the comments. Yeah, it is. Um in my defense, and it is a little bit in my defense, I did pick that and I did very clearly say it and I even responded to somebody on Twitter pointing this out when they asked me to clarify. I did say that somewhat with the assumption that the weather was going to be terrible. And I thought that neither team was going to be able to throw the ball very well and if they couldn't throw it, they weren't going to be able to score a ton. Now, that doesn't necessarily hold a lot of water when Ohio State pushed Michigan around, but I felt like if Ohio State wasn't throwing it down the yard and that Michigan could really load the box, they might actually slow down Ohio State. Obviously, that's not the game that happened, but I'm defending myself a little bit here. All right, now that you've derailed me and I can actually talk about the prediction I'm going to make in this game, sir, um, (laughs) I think, personally, I think the issue is that Wisconsin got isolated the last time they played Ohio State. And what I mean by that is Ohio State, and I've said this several times in the season, likes to spread teams real wide and then run zone green concepts and power concepts in the middle. Fields has a really live arm. He has the ability to get the ball anywhere down the field that he wants. We can talk about how much that translates or doesn't translate him to him being a top-end quarterback, maybe in a different discussion or video. Um, I'm not saying he does or doesn't, just saying arm strength does not necessarily mean great quarterback. You know, Nate Stanley... Yeah, there's a whole video we could do on him and, and whether or not, you know, what his arm strength is and what it means, et cetera, et cetera. Iowa fans hate us. We're not wrong. Um, but, and, you know, relative to this game, last time Ohio State would isolate the middle linebacker and run these plays, and then Wisconsin's linebackers were not athletic enough a lot of times to get to the edge. And where they really got killed was on a handful of plays with Dobbins where he would get to the edge and get around the offensive line or hit a hole – before the Wisconsin linebackers could react, or maybe they were a step off, and they were just gone. And the linebackers couldn't get to Dobbins, the safeties weren't athletic enough to get over, and they just run down the field for big chunks and for touchdowns. And they really killed Wisconsin with that one concept. And then Wisconsin couldn't solve it without breaking everything else. I think Wisconsin has had several weeks to see that flaw, and I doubt they get exploited in the same way. They will find some way not to let that happen again. Now, it may make them more insolvent in another area, which is where I think we'll see um, maybe Justin Fields' arm a lot more in this game, potentially, because I think I think Wisconsin's going to make Fields throw. I think they're going to look at that and say, you know, I'd rather go single safety and let guys one-on-one with no safety help than do that again, where I don't have anybody to help, or, you know, a safety to help with a run game, and I'm just going to give up. Even though I'm stuffing you, one out of three plays and I give up three yards in the next one. Then I give up 15 on the third and I just get killed. I think they're going to try to slow that down. And I think it's going to be somewhat effective. I think Ohio State still gets theirs. I think they win this game. I'm going to see like 27, 10. The, the issue for me is I just don't think Wisconsin is going to be willing to be the aggressive style offense that we talked about. They need to do. I don't have enough confidence in Cone's ability to do that. He has had some good games. He hasn't had enough. Um, I do think if they get really aggressive and score, this game is going to end up being more high, higher scoring. I think Ohio State could put the fl- pedal to the floor and change their offensive style if needed. I don't think they're going to need to, and I think when they don't need to, they're just going to let this play out and be like a, 2017, a 27 to 10 game uh, that Ohio State is able to, you know, cruise to a victory, maybe a little. I think it's going to be closer than last time. Um, but even, again, 27 to 10 I'm right at the spread, so I didn't know that was a spread at the time, so it's it's still pretty consistent. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I think Ohio State, Ohio State fans want to see another 2014 Ohio State-Wisconsin game. You don't need it. Like you just said, you sort of hinted at it, and we saw it against Michigan. Ohio State, if they need to go out and score 45 in a game because the other team's scoring 28, they'll do it. 
Um, we saw this again. A lot of our listeners are Alabama fans, SEC uh, region fans. We saw this with Alabama last year against Oklahoma. Oklahoma finally started scoring that game, and Alabama tried to slow the game down. But whenever they needed to go out and get a touchdown to keep it a two score uh, differential, they did it. And Ohio State's going to be able to do the same thing, I think, in this game if they need to. But like you, I don't think uh, I don't think Wisconsin is going to put up that number. Um, the best hope they have is to keep it ugly, shorten the game. Um, but I think in that case, they're just going to – that's what happened the first time. And, and we'd see a repeat of that because at some point, even good defenses, if your offense isn't keeping the ball away from their offense and putting pressure on them by scoring, that frees them up to do a lot of stuff offensively and, and finally just go at your neck. And that's what's going to happen if they try that. All right, y'all, that's it for our second time around, Wisconsin and Ohio State. Please remember to like and subscribe. Helps this channel out a lot, and I do think that y'all shared us a little bit this last time around. That was very much appreciated. Thanks so much, y'all. Have a great week, and God bless.